Okay, so in this video I'm just going to continue talking uh, more about molecular orbital theory. And basically, l let's just recap. Um, in, in molecular orbital theory, you set up what's called a trial function. And the trial function is an educated guess as to what the solution of the Schrodinger equation might be for the entire molecule, because it's impossible to solve the Schrodinger equation for even uh, some of the simplest molecules. So the simplest trial functions that we use are called linear combinations of atomic orbitals. And what these are are uh, weighted linear sums of the valence atomic orbitals of all of the atoms in a molecule. So in my last video, uh, I went over the uh, molecular orbitals of the H2 molecule. The H2 molecule is fairly simple because the valence atomic orbitals, they're just 1s orbitals. There's no uh, other, there's no 2s orbitals or, and there's definitely no p orbitals. So in the case of the H2 molecule, you have, um, first of all, let's talk about linear combinations of uh, 1s orbitals. Remember that two 1s orbitals can constructively interfere to form the sigma 1s orbital, or they can destructively interfere to form the sigma 1s star uh, molecular orbital. And the sigma 1s orbital is termed bonding. This is called a bonding orbital because it is lower than energy uh, than the uh, atomic orbitals from which it is formed. And the sigma 1s star is called an anti-bonding molecular orbital because it is higher in energy uh, than these two uh, 1s orbitals. So kind of a number that we use to uh, keep tabs on you know how many electrons are in these bonding orbitals versus how many are in these anti-bonding uh, anti-bonding molecular orbitals is a number called bond order and the bond order is defined as uh, one half of the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding So, in general, a uh, positive bond order means uh, the molecule has uh, electrons predominantly in bonding molecular orbitals, which means that uh, it's a relatively stable molecule. And a zero or negative bond order usually means that the uh, molecule is not stable and that um, the majority of its electrons are in a, um, are in a state of higher energy. So, remember, when we talk about the H2 molecule, uh, we have a linear combination of, uh, of two 1s atomic orbitals. And in the case of H2, each of those uh, 1s atomic orbitals has one electron in it. So two electrons uh, are being donated to this pot of molecular orbitals, basically. And if we follow the correct procedure for uh, assigning the um, electrons to the orbitals, we would fill the lowest energy orbitals up first. And since we have two electrons, uh, the bonding sigma 1s molecular orbital is going to be completely full. And the uh, sigma 1s star molecular orbital, that's the anti-bonding molecular orbital, that is uh, completely empty. So in the case of H2, the bond order would then become 1 half times uh, 2, the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals, minus 0 which is the uh, number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals, and this would be 1. So that's the molecular orbital situation for uh, H2. But now let's, let's, let's try something different. Um, instead of H2, let's, uh, let, let's see if we can uh, determine the molecular orbitals for the uh, H2 minus ion. So basically all it is is just an H2 molecule with uh, an extra electron. So basically, remember we can use a linear combination of atomic orbitals here. So that means to get an H2 uh, minus ion, we can combine an H atom with an H minus ion. And the electron configuration of the, just the uh, plain old hydrogen atom is gonna have one electron and for the uh, H minus ion that would have one extra uh, one extra electron than hydrogen does in its normal state, so two electrons in the uh, 1s orbital. So now we have three electrons that are being delivered uh, to the molecular orbitals. So we have three electrons. Uh, these ones are going to fill up. This this orbital will fill up, 
and this orbital, the one remaining electron, will populate the uh, this orbital up here, the sigma 1s star. So in the case of the H2 minus ion, the bond order is going to be one half of two minus one, which would be uh, one half. Two electrons in bonding orbitals, one electron in the anti-bonding orbital. So that means uh, one half of two minus one, that is one half. So notice that for the H2 minus ion, uh, it has a positive bond order, so that means that this should exist in nature, and uh, experiments have confirmed this. And, and that's, it should be apparent at this point that molecular orbital theory is more useful than uh, valence bond theory, because under valence bond theory, there wouldn't really be any way to justify the existence of the H2 minus ion. There would be no way to uh, construct that. But molecular orbital theory, um, like I said, is more uh, refined. So, what about the H2 2 minus ion. So we can construct the H2 2 minus ion with just a H minus ion and another H minus ion. And the uh, each of the H minus ions is going to have two electrons in that 1s orbital. So now we have four electrons total so these ones will fill up nowhere to go but up here and these ones are going to fill up as well. One, two, three, four. The total number of electrons in the molecular orbital should always equal the sum of the total number of electrons in all the uh, atomic orbitals. For the valence shell, that is. Okay, so now let's calculate the bond order for the H2 2 minus ion. That would be one half two electrons in bonding, two electrons in uh, anti-bonding, so two minus two, and this would be zero. So that means the H2 two minus ion is not stable. What about helium, He2? That would basically be the same thing. I mean, a helium atom has two electrons And we're talking about linear combination of s orbitals, of the 1s orbitals, and that combination is going to be the same no matter what element you have. So it turns out that the uh, bond order for He2 would be the same as the bond order for the H2 2 minus ion, which is zero. So we wouldn't expect a diatomic helium to exist in nature, and it doesn't. What about the H2 plus ion, though? What if I were to take an electron away? from this uh, helium, from this diatomic helium? Would that make it more stable or would that make it less stable? So how about we linear, linearly combine a helium atom and instead of a, uh, another helium atom, we'll make that a helium plus ion. So that means it's gonna have one fewer electron than the, uh, than the regular helium atom would. So that means it's going to be one electron. And when we assign the electrons to the molecular orbitals, we have three total. So that means that this one will fill up. The one remaining one will go here in the anti-bonding MO. And then we would have a bond order of one half of two minus one again, which would be one half. So some some of these uh, ions are actually more stable than the uh, just um, molecules because of uh, just because of how these molecular orbitals are constructed and he2 plus is actually um, is actually stable it exists in nature he2 2 plus would be even more stable right because you know then we have one more fewer electron which means we'd have a uh, in, in the anti-bonding molecular orbital which means we would have a higher uh, bond order which means more stability so there you go. There's just uh, sort of a quick lesson on how bond order is used to predict uh, some st the stability of a few diatomic molecules. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, p orbitals and the molecular uh, orbitals that are formed by p orbitals. So stay tuned for that. And as always, good luck.